Trong chuyến hành trình đến thăm 30 quốc gia kéo dài một năm của mình, gia đình bốn người Rivenberg đã đặt chân tới 9 quốc gia châu Á tính tới thời điểm dịp Tết Nguyên đán 2015. Từ Kenbot, Campuchia, gia đình Rivenberg di chuyển xuống phía Nam để tiến vào biên giới Việt Nam. Trong chuyến thăm Việt Nam kéo dài khoảng 3 tuần rưỡi, gia đình Rivenberg đã có những trải nghiệm thú vị và độc đáo tại những nơi họ đi qua, trải dài từ Nam tới Bắc và cả không khí của dịp Tết tại Hà Nội. Xin mời quý vị cùng lắng nghe những chia sẻ của họ về Việt Nam qua cuộc trò chuyện với VOA tiếng Việt sau đây. First of all, what surprised you the most when you came to Vietnam? What surprised us the most? Anyone can just shout out. No, there's a lot of plans. Plans. Plan. Plan. Okay, okay. Plan. The beaches. Oh, the beaches. I guess that's what surprised us the most. That's Why? Good. Because we haven't. I don't know. I never thought of Vietnam as a beach destination. You always think of Thailand or Bali or Australia, but you never think of Vietnam. And the beaches here are amazing. Yeah, they're beautiful. So. That was a, a big, very nice surprise. So um, let's say when you come back to the States and if your neighbors, colleagues and friends, classmates, etc. ask you how your experience in Vietnam are, what would you tell them? You can answer that. Oh. Oh, just uh, phenomenal, really. It's, it's been really, um, it's been really interesting. Um, Uh, you know, before this trip, we never really heard of a lot of people talk about visiting Vietnam. No. And so it was really interesting to be here, um, to tour through most of Vietnam, from the south through the north, and um, uh, learn a lot about um, Vietnam's culture, their way of life, how they live, how welcoming they are to uh, uh, Americans. Um, uh, Uh, just learning uh, more about their way of life and experiencing that firsthand. And so we, we hope uh, through our um, travel blog site that we can help um, educate other people on Vietnam and encourage them to explore and travel and, and have uh, uh, you know, an opportunity to enjoy Vietnam themselves. So how about you guys, Tyler and Kara? Is there any one? Is there anything that you want to tell your friends? That's that's too much to think about right know. now. How about the beaches? How about the beaches? Or the bicycle riding? Well, I told them about riding the bikes on the street. In Hoi An. In Hoi An. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was really fun, uh-huh. and um, we there was lots of motorbikes and cars on the streets, so it was yeah. a little challenging, <laughs> and sometimes they would get in your way, yeah. and stuff. I told my friends of just like about walking across the street in Ho Chi Minh City with all the motorbikes and the cars. Uh-huh. You have to like go, like you have to hop between <laughs> each and every like lane, and you have to make it really <laughs> fast. Like Frogger. Yes, like Frogger. Yeah, because, um, There's motor lights even on the sidewalks there because the traffic so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's one of the most uh, craziest things that you've ever experienced in Vietnam, right? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. But we, it's not a bad thing. It's just kind of like interesting. It. Like it. Yeah. I like it. Fun. Yeah. It's, a, it's a little chaotic, and I think that's why we like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, speaking of the motorbikes, um, I. Uh, read some of your blogs about riding motorbikes and you missed the chance to riding a bike to go through the city but actually later I saw a team riding a motorbike so where yeah. was it and how do you handle riding the motorbikes? Yes, so we uh, yeah, we did miss our chance to ride the motorbikes in um, Ho Chi Minh City uh, but then we uh, we were able to rent them in Hoi An And so we rode around Hoi An on motorbikes for a day. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, just fitting in right there with the locals and, and being with them out uh, on the motorbikes. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Just exploring Hoi An and the surrounding area. Yeah. Um, feeling like we were the locals. Right? So. <laughs> like, we didn't see like any tourists really doing right. that. Right. No. Just saw the locals. It's just us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mama was- and it was cool because I guess in one of the pictures, We stopped somewhere, and then the Vietnamese man invited us over, and we drank the coconut water with them, and it was neat. 
kind of mm-hmm. putting ourselves out there on our own because then you get to interact more with people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we drove a little more <laughs> to, a, <laughs> to a dead end. <laughs> and then, like, on one side is the water, and then on the other is, like, houses and stuff. And then we're on, like, a little street, uh, right? Yeah, a small street. And then they both turned around fine. But then <laughs> when Mom turned, she almost fell into the water. We almost drove in, over the side into the water. That would have been bad. We came really close. <laughs> but we didn't. <laughs> All right. So um, now we've been talking a few things about Vietnam. Uh, but now, like, I, I understand there's so many things that you can think of when someone mentions Vietnam. But what would be the first thing? Uh, comes to your mind if someone mentions Vietnam? Only this the first trip. thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what part about this trip or our experience? I would say Tet. Oh, you would yeah, first think of Tet? Tet. Yeah, I don't know why. Probably because I just, we've been talking if it's been yeah. part of what we've done the whole time. Right there. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's been like the Tet type of season, kind of like the whole time we've been here. So kind of like I think of Vietnam and like this Tet kind of season. So like I, I kind of think of it of like the streets with all the lanterns and the red decorations. And that's kind of what I just think of Vietnam right now. Mm-hmm. I think of diversity because you have the Mekong Delta in the south and the beaches and it's hot. And then you come up to Hoi An and it's a little bit quieter and you have the three beaches and then you... Get to Hanoi. And yeah. For me, um, uh, I was really fascinated by the mm. Kuchi Tunnels, and uh, that really made an impression on me. I was, um, uh, you know, walking through the tunnels and seeing and learning, um, you know, how the Vietnam War was fought, um, uh, and just, uh, you know, the tactics uh, that the Vietnamese used. I was really impressed. Um, how they were able to live underground the way they did and um, the various tactics that they used uh, in the war. Um, so it just left a, a lasting impression on me. So I always think of that. Yeah. And it was also cool to like see it from like their side because they were, they were like fighting the Americans. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's kind of cool to see it from like their side and same as that of all the tactics that they used to defeat the Americans. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really neat. Uh, I don't really know what the first, first thing comes into mind, but I, I agree with all of those. I just can't think of one, <laughs> another one. <laughs> so last but not least, um, what would be the best piece of advice for those who want to do a long trip around the world as you do? Oh, last question? Uh, the first advice thing. for anyone who wants to take a long trip around the world? It's fun, but difficult. It's fun, but difficult. Yeah. Stay in nice, nice places sometimes. <laughs> That's a good piece of advice. <laughs> Not all the time. Okay, Sarah sometimes. has a point. Because you have a budget, and you're trying to keep your costs low. And if you always try to stay in budget places that aren't that comfortable, it gets to you after a while. So it's nice here and there to have a splurge place where you can relax and spread out um, just to kind of get back on track, and then you can do the budget places again. Yeah, and I would say uh, don't debate it any longer. Just just do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's it's hard to get over. Um, you know, it's hard to get beyond the things that you have to give up to take a trip like this. Uh, you know, we sold our house, we sold our cars, we took the kids out of awesome schools um, to have this experience as a family. And, you know, um, <laughs> and it's been uh, well worth it. I mean, you can't even put value on it. But for the four of us to be together as a family for a whole year, uh, to share this experience together, to just live um, um, like, uh, like we have been and traveling and seeing the world and having all these experiences. It's just um, been really amazing and it's worth more than any possessions that you could have.